What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Crack of Pack series. Today we are opening up, I think for the very first time, a pack of Guilds of Ravnica. Obviously one of the newest sets, not the newest. We just had Ravnica Allegiance come out just a couple weeks ago or about a week ago, I believe. Uh, so I'm really excited to be opening this on the series. We haven't gotten to do, or we haven't gotten the opportunity to really look at these packs uh, in depth. So this is really our first look into it. So Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Of course, we're going to look at this from a pack one pick one perspective. So we will do the best we can to figure out what our first round draft pick would be if we were drafting this set uh, and this happened to be our first pack. So with that, of course, we're going to go through every card and our first card here is Ornery Goblin. It's a two one for one and a red. When it blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, it deals one damage to that creature. This is just a perfectly fine aggressive uh, red drop, I think, or uh, two drops, excuse me. Uh, I think it goes really, really well in a red aggressive deck. Uh, and so this is something that I would be interested in if I was already in that strategy. I don't think this is something that I'd want to pick up early, uh, but it is definitely a useful card. Uh, Skyline Scout is a 2-1 for 1 and a white. Uh, when it attacks, you may pay 1 and a white, and if you do, it gains flying until end of turn. Again, this is just another solid 2-drop. There's a lot of really good, just kind of low aggressive creatures in this set. Uh, and these are both uh, kind of fit that bill. Uh, in this case, I think I like the uh, Skyline Scout a little bit better. You can give it evasion, make sure that it's going to be dealing a little bit more damage. The Ornery Goblin obviously is focused a little bit more on blocking, but it can also focus on the aggression side and obviously uh, bait somebody into a block, that kind of a thing. Uh, but I think I like the Skyline Scout more. I'd really like to see it deal as much damage as possible, being able to give it some flying and just uh, a, a mana sink kind of late game to get some of these cards in for some damage. Definitely useful. So definitely like that more. Uh, Wall of Mist is a 0-5 defender for one and a blue. Really just playing the part of the defender. The, I mean, the quintessential defender. It doesn't do anything other than block for you. Uh, I don't like cards like this. There are certainly decks that want stuff like this. If you're playing like a really heavy setup kind of deck where you've got a really big bomb you're trying to get to, but you need something to kind of help you get there, cards like this can be useful. So there are certain instances where you would want that. But really, I find that walls are mostly traps for new players, uh, that a lot of new players take them in the thought process of, okay, this is going to protect me. And yes, they will. They're, that's not technically incorrect. But the problem being, you're also not forwarding your game plan by any means. So like, you're not really gaining momentum. You're just stalling. Uh, some cases, that's okay if you have an actual end plan. Uh, but in some cases, I think a lot of players fall into the trap of literally just stalling and then spinning wheels for nothing. So not a fan of cards like that. Uh, Wojek Bodyguard is a 3-3 for 2 and a red. It does have Mentor, which is a really cool mechanic. Whenever uh, this creature attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. Uh, so this helps you build up your threats and really, really just flood the board with uh, small creatures, but then they actually get to build up into more. Uh, it can't attack or block alone, which is a little bit of a drawback, but uh, it is a three drop. And when you're in a red deck, or in this case, really a Boros deck is really probably where you're going to end up. Uh, if you don't know, Boris is red and white, just to clarify. But uh, if you're going to end up in that strategy, you're going to have a lot of low drops, uh, especially at that two level. We see Skyline Scout already here. Uh, so a card like this is actually really just fine. I think it's perfect. Uh, it's going to help you boost up all your other creatures. And I do like it so far over the Skyline Scout, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Dev, Dev Karen Descendant. I... Thank you, wizards, for making things difficult to pronounce. Uh, it's a 2-2 two -two for 1 and a green. Uh, you can also pay 4 and a green, and it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. I find that this card is just a solid 2-drop. Uh, it's not amazing by any means, but it does give you a mana sink late game. Uh, mana sinks are pretty important in my mind, especially in limited. Uh, it just gives you somewhere to be efficient always, uh, and that's something that you really want to try and strive for in a limited environment. Uh, you want to make the efficient plays sometimes over the plays that might gain you short term advantage uh, because long term, if you play the efficient way, most of the time that's going to get you ahead. You're going to play more spells per turn. You're going to be a little bit more proactive. A card like that can usually help. So uh, having a mana sink late game, perfectly fine. You can buff this to a 4-4 for some reason. If you happen to have a ton of mana out, uh, you can boost this even a couple times and give it 6-6, six, six, something like that. That could be insane. But uh, most of the time you may pump it once, 
Uh, but that's still 4-4. I mean, that's pretty good. So I do like this card. It's not amazing, but it's definitely a card I'd be interested in in a green deck. Uh, not over the bodyguard for now. Vicious Rumors is a sorcery for one black. It deals one damage to each opponent. Each opponent discards a card, then puts the top card of their library into their graveyard, and you gain one life. I find that this is not necessarily a great way to play in this set. Uh, this card actually got a little bit of hype because it is a lot of ability on just a one mana sorcery. The problem being in this set, jumpstart is a thing and it doesn't really hurt players as much as you think it might. So I'm not a fan of this card. I actually was on the hype train with it a little bit in the, uh, when it was first spoiled. However, uh, since playing it a little bit, not a fan of it at all. Uh, is it lock it? There's a full cycle of these for every uh, guild. This is an artifact for three mana. You can tap it to add a blue or a red to your mana pool. You can also pay four hybrid mana between uh, blue and red. Uh, tap it and sacrifice it to draw two cards. Uh, this is a perfectly fine uh, playable card, especially if you're splashing, but even just in an is it build, uh, this is perfectly viable. Giving you some late game draw is great. It does technically ramp you, so if you're on turn three and you've got something on turn five or, or a five drop that you'd really like to play early, uh, this is a great card to have. So I like these cards. They're not like my go-to. I want to play these in every deck, but they're perfectly fine. They're they're viable for sure. Uh, certain guilds will want them more than others. The Is It Guild, I'm okay with playing it. Uh, like a Boros Guild or something like that, though, probably not so much. Ooh, great card. So Direct Current. Uh, one and two red for a sorcery. It deals two damage to any target, so it can be creatures or players. Uh, it also has the jumpstart mechanic, so you can cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card. In addition to paying its other costs, excuse me, you then exile a card, so or you exile this card. So you essentially get double use out of it, and that can actually be really, really handy. It always gives you a play. Again, giving you something to do late game, even if you don't have the best cards in your hand, is fantastic. Uh, so I love this card. I think this is definitely the pick so far. Uh, two damage, while not amazing, is going to deal with a lot of the creatures. We've seen a lot of like two drop two twos, things like that. This deals with those very, very well, uh, very, very efficiently as well. And you can leave it up late game uh, to kind of threaten the opponent. Uh, Tron Shell Beetle, Iron Shell Beetle, excuse me, not Tron. Uh, I've got Tron on the mind, apparently. Is a 1 1 for 1 and a green. It enters the battlefield and you put a 1 1 counter on target creature. A lot of times that will just be the Iron Shell Beetle, which is perfectly fine. That just becomes a 2 2 for 2. Uh, but in other cases, if you've got uh, a better target on the field, you can pump that up instead. I think, again, this is a per perfectly serviceable 2 drop. There's a lot of really solid 2 drops in this set, I will say. Uh, and this is fine. It's not amazing, but there are certain decks that would want this uh, for sure. Muse Drake is a 1-3 flyer for 3 and a red when it enters the, or a blue, excuse me. When it enters the battlefield, you do draw a card. Uh, I find that this card is actually pretty good. It's not the strongest card in the world, and I was not sold on it at first, but the fact that it draws you a card is really helpful. Obviously, the flying is pretty good too. It's going to be a little bit evasive, which does help. Uh, but I mean, it's serviceable. I don't think I'd like it above direct current. That might be incorrect, uh, but that might just be the way I draft. I do like this card. I would definitely run it, uh, in a deck with direct current. In fact, uh, Undercity Necrolisk is a three, three for three and a black. You can pay one and sacrifice another creature to put a one, one counter on it. Uh, gains menace until the end of the turn. Activate, activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. Uh, if you don't know what menace means, can only be blocked by two or more creatures so it does have to be double blocked at the very least uh, a card like this is okay I'm not a huge fan of it I think it's a little bit like a, a bit of a setup I think it's fine uh, I think there are instances where you would run this because it is gonna get in for some damage like clearly uh, being able to give it menace is pretty good uh, so ideally you'll be able to swing sacrifice a creature every turn and be able to swing in with this it also does get counters not just an, until the end of the turn ability so I do like that as well. Uh, I do think this is a pretty good threat, uh, but I don't like that you have to sacrifice other creatures to do it. That's a little bit unfortunate in my mind. I think there are instances where you can use that to your advantage for sure, uh, but in general, not a great fan of a card like this. Uh, Inescapable Blaze is four and two red for an instant. It cannot be countered and it deals six damage to any target. Uh, I mean, okay, uh, I'm in for this. Uh, it's a six mana instant speed burn spell that hits any target and can't be countered. So that seems pretty good. 
Uh, yes, it's expensive at six mana, but uh, it is a lot of damage. This can literally close out the game immediately, so I'm definitely in for that. Uh, Gird for battle is one white for a sorcery. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of up to two target creatures. This is a pretty good card uh, for one mana. It's a lot of uh, damage that's being put onto creatures, but uh, and by damage I mean counters, but it, it would stack into damage. Uh, I don't really like it, uh, if I'm going to be honest, though. Uh, it's just 1-1 one, one counters, and like I'd rather do a little bit more. Uh, I'd rather play an actual threat than like build up some of my like smaller threats. I just feel like that's a little bit more important. I might be wrong in that category for sure, but uh, it does definitely play into the mentor theme too. So I, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it to be honest, but if you're into it, go for it, I guess. And our rare uh, Unmoored Ego is one, a blue and a black. Choose a card name, search target opponent's graveyard hand and library for up to four cards with that name and exile them. Uh, that player shuffles their library, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. Uh, this is a really interesting card. This is actually constructed viable uh, when it comes to certain uh, metagames, I will say. Uh, definitely Modern is going to love this against Tron, but uh, I don't like it at all in Limited. It's actually quite bad. We also do have a Selesnya Guildgate, uh, but I think pretty clearly Inescapable Blaze is the card I would pick. Uh, again, I might be wrong, but that just seems like a great, great card. It's lucrative, it's huge amount of burn, uh, and it can't be countered, which is really important. So, uh, for me, that's definitely my pick. Feel free to disagree in the comment sections below. Uh, but if you did enjoy this video, please feel free to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for, for watching so much, guys. We really appreciate it. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.